All right, everybody. It's Sunday, September 15th, 2013. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon here. Now, I'm in the middle of constructing my new cooling radiator for the gasifier. And I really didn't plan on putting this into the video. What I had planned on doing was constructing the whole thing and then showing you how I built it and giving you all the measurements. Then I got to thinking about it. Hey, it may not be a bad thing for you guys to see how I'm doing this from scratch. So I decided to break out the camera and take a couple of quick shots of this for you. So I'm going to walk around it and then I'll give you some explanations of what we're looking at. All right, I'm using two inch fence post for the main piece of pipe right here. And um, I've got the cosmetic top end caps on both sides of this to give me a seal. And of course, when it's really finished, there'll be some sort of seal at RTV or something on the ends of these caps here to keep them from leaking air. On the top of it here, I've got a coupler, two inches, just regular old two inch plumbing. And you can see that I took the grinder and I cut it out so that it would fit the contour of this pipe right here. And um, also, I cut this hole a quarter of an inch smaller than the hole in here. So I think I cut it one and three quarters inch or something like that. I'm not really sure. But um, it's just whatever this is, I cut it a little bit smaller. This way I had some overhang in here, and I've done this because I want to get a good weld with the MIG welder on this thing, so I knew that would make my life simpler. Okay, on the bottom side of this, this is where the actual radiator pipes will come out of it. And there's four of them, as you can see. This is also fence posted, and this stuff is one and one-fourth inch in diameter. It's the stuff they actually run on the top of the fence, okay, to tie the fence into. Now, I will not be MIG welding this in here. I actually purchased me a small oxyacetylene setup, and I'm going to braze this guy in here because I just feel that I can do a better job with that. Now, that's something I do know how to do is use gas, so I won't have any problems with this, and it'll be a good tight setup when I'm finished with it. Plus, brazing this with actual brass, I'm not dealing with anything that's going to have major stress on it, so I know it's going to hold up. But um, something else to keep in mind, too. The gas is going to want to take its least resistance path to get out through these pipes. So guess what's going to happen? It's going to come in here, and it's going to favor these two guys right here. So what I'm going to have to do is go inside of here and add me some sort of steel baffle to cause the smoke when it comes in, or the gas it is, to come down, and actually go both directions a little bit so that it doesn't favor these two holes. This way I'll get an even spread out of all these pipes, and I'll get the best cooling possible. But I wanted to show you this because I felt that this may be of some help to you. And basically the only things I'm using to do this with is a tiny drill press with some hole cutting saws and a grinder. That's it. That and a tape measure and a pen. But um, I hope this helps you. So let's get back to the video. Here's the radiator completed. I haven't painted it yet, but that's the next thing to do. I'm going to let you get a good close look at everything here. As I had mentioned, I used the MIG welder on the top for the stuff that I knew was going to see the strain on it. And I went ahead and used an oxycetylene torch and braze welded with brass for the actual radiator pipes themselves. To me, that was the simplest way to do this. And I got a good, complete, tight seal on this. Also, I had mentioned that when the air comes in right here, it's going to have a tendency to favor these two pipes. So you have to put an internal baffle in here to cause it to spread out evenly across all the pipes. And I'm going to show you the top view of it, and I'm going to let you see inside of it on the sides. Now hopefully you'll be able to see this. I really can't see what the camera's seeing, but I'm going to zoom in on it. It's almost a football shape. I'll give you all the measurements of how far up I've got it raised up and the diameters of what I made in there too. Okay, let's take a look at the side view of it. Right now I haven't actually put these guys on here where they're um, sealed airtight with any kind of sealant. So we'll look inside of it to the side view of it, and hopefully you'll be able to get an idea of what you're looking at. Okay. Well, that's basically it right there. And I used a 1024, I think a two-inch screw that I ran straight up through here. I took a little nut and bolted them down here. And then I took the braze welder and brazed the top of the screw head so the thing couldn't free spin so it'll be in there and it won't rattle loose. But there it is, and let's get to spray painting this thing, and then I'm going to go ahead and set it up on the gasifier, and we'll look at this thing as it's completely set up. Before I give this thing a layer of paint, I'll let everybody take a look at this thing completed. With all the interconnecting pieces on it, that'll allow it to go to the gasifier and the filter system. All 
All right. All right, everything's been painted and the gasifier is ready to be assembled. And once I get finished covering what we're looking at right here, I'll do just that. I'll pause out the video and I'll reassemble the gasifier so that you can see how all this goes together. Now with that said, I think I come up with a pretty unique idea. And so far I haven't seen anybody else out on YouTube using this concept. So let me explain. When I was designing this, I wanted something that was gonna be extremely simple. Something that was gonna be user friendly and something that I didn't have to have giant pipe wrenches to assemble or disassemble it with. And I came up with something that fits that criteria. So what I come up with was a slip and fit system. Okay? Show you what I got here and over here. And basically what I found, guys, was I found that you could find automotive exhaust pipe that would marry up perfect to this fence post. Check this out. That is cherry. It doesn't get any better than that. It's like a telescoping mass. The tolerances are tight enough to make it where it fits together pretty tight and it can seal itself, but not so tight that you have to beat it together or so loose that it's going to bleed out around the edges. Not only that, you can find automotive pipe that will fit on the inside of the fence post, which is what I've got right here. And um, it just doesn't get any better than that. It made the job so much simpler to do it this way. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all of the part numbers, but what I do have, I will share with you. And um, I'm going to show you how this works. We'll get this piece here first and walk over to the gasifier. This is the output. That's tits. It doesn't get any better than that. The only thing that I should have done was make this piece here. I should have made him six inches tall. I did that down here, okay? And I still get a good seal on it. It's no problem because on this guy right here, I use a piece of paper tape or masking tape. I go around it and the worst that happens to it is after a couple hours run that it gets hard and then you can turn back around and still unwrap it when you're finished with the job. So it still does what it needs to do. Now also, this stuff self seals because these are deep pipes. This stuff self seals and it works great. But if you don't trust it, you can always use this stuff right here. They sell it at the hardware stores. I guess it's emergency repair stuff, the rubber pieces. You can use this on the cooler parts of the gasifier and they make it many different sizes. It slides down and you just take your pipe, put on it, and then you slide this back up and tighten it down and it's pristine airtight seal. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you make everything as far as your slip and fits go, make it all six inches, you won't have to use it. Something else I need to mention, and that is, on all these slipping fits, use axle grease, okay? I can't stress that enough. That'll give you a couple of pluses. First of all, it makes things go together much easier, and it also adds to the ability of sealing, because it's not going to melt like candle wax. Also, it protects you from rust. The same thing with all the plumbing stuff. Anything that's not welded, that's been screwed together, notice that, I've done the same thing here. I've actually used axle grease on every single threaded piece of pipe on here because I don't want any rust on anything. The hardest part of the whole job was this right here. Now, you guys probably remember this setup from my very first gasifier. And um, I'm still using that. I'm using that on my final output of my gas here. But basically, I couldn't find a piece of automotive pipe that would fit over this, uh, I think it's one and a quarter inch fence post up here. So I found something that was pretty close. It was close enough, and what I did was I found an extender, and I'll give you the part number on this here. Here's the extender, and where my thumb is was cut off right here, okay? And basically, you can see how this goes together. Let me get it in the camera. And of course, this piece here screws on to the top of him, just like this, for the output before it hits the filters. Okay. I'm going to give you guys all the part numbers on this. Now, what I wanted to tell you was I didn't have a piece that would fit this perfect, so I got something that was close enough, and basically I cut down the side of it, and I spread it out maybe not quite an eighth of an inch, and then I slid it over, and then I went around it and welded it, and of course zipped it back up with the welder, and that was done. So that's permanent, and now I've got a slip and fit for this right here. Okay. As once again, be sure to use axle grease on all these fittings. Use it on all your threads, 
on, you don't want to have anything that can seize up on you. Because if you do, it'll just uh, annoy you and make you use language that you don't want to use. So there it is. There is one more thing that I do want to cover with you guys, and then I'm going to come back and give you part numbers and everything. And that is, I didn't do this on my first how-to video, and I needed a butt kicking machine for doing this. This should have been behind me kicking me in the butt for not putting this on the video. Let me unscrew this guy here. Sorry about that. This is important you see this, because I had some people come back and ask me, you know, hey, how'd you do this? I need to show you firsthand. Better late than never, huh? All right. On my 90 degree elbow, basically what I did is I cut a slot here and here, customized to the piece of steel that I was using. Notice this piece of steel is not sitting flush, but it's sitting back. Okay. I cut a piece of steel. I drilled the hole into it to accept this quarter inch piece of guy right here. And um, on the back of it, I welded a nut and he's offset. This way I didn't have anything bulging out that was going to cause this to hit it. And then I put the steel in here and then I filled back in with the welder. And it was a done deal, okay? I need to go back and replace this rubber piece here. I never had it glued on there good from the beginning. So that's another thing that I'm going to go back and fix. But for those of you all that were asking about that, now you've seen it firsthand. And that's exactly how I've done it. Okay, part numbers, guys. Let's cover some part numbers here. Here's the automotive. Now I'm going to give you the part number on this. I'm going to put it right above since you can see it. I'll do it on computer. Okay, move to the next one, and that's this guy right here. Let's go ahead and give you a part number on him. There you go. I'm hoping this helps you, and if you do have any questions, feel free to shoot me something in the blog, leave me something on an email, carrier pigeon, however you need to do it, I'm, I'll be more than glad to help you guys. Because if it hadn't been for others that helped me out there, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So on that note, I'm going to pause this out and we're going to move on to the next part of the video. Alright, here's the gasifier fully assembled with the new cooling system set up on it. And the footprint of this thing is 3.5 feet by 5.5 feet with the tallest points being at the tops of the cooling radiators themselves. And it's 6 feet and a few inches give or take. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to walk around it and just let you get a look at everything and then I'm going to make a second go around and I want to give a basic tutorial or a basic explanation of a flow chart on this thing of how it's set up and works. I'm going to end this video out on a flowchart explanation of the system and we're going to start right at the gasifier. This is where the fuel is made and of course once it's produced it comes out right here. It exits and goes to this pipe and by the way all of this is steel. It comes in to my first line of defense which is my first cooling radiator right here. It continues on downhill and then it enters my expansion tank. Now some people like to use vortex filters, that's fine, but for me the expansion tank was the ticket. So I'm really happy with this. Now um, speaking of, my expansion tank is probably about 17 or 18 gallons of real estate, something like that, I'm not sure. Anyhow, I think this is a 12 gallon propane tank and then I stacked another 5 gallon propane tank on top of it. But anyhow, once the gas enters down here, it's going to expand and it's like air conditioning 101. Once the gas expands, it's rapidly going to cool down a lot. And it's going to fill this whole tank up. And you're going to get a couple of benefits from it right off the bat. The first thing is, it's like a glass of ice water out on a hot summer day where you get condensation on the outside of the glass. This is backwards. This is going to happen on the inside of it. So you're going to have a lot of condensation on the inside of it, which means your gas is going to be drying out a good bit. All that condensation and even tar soots or soots from cracked tar or whatever's in that gas, you're going to lose a lot of that too. It's going to stick to the sides. It's going to wash down to the bottom. And on mine, I've got a reservoir starting at this weld line right here. I've never seen it fill up that much. But it's just a reservoir right here. Once this thing has been ran and I'm finished with the run, then I can break the drain caulk here and empty the tank and I'm ready for the next time. But anyhow, the gas comes in here. 
it enters this pipe right here which goes to the second set of cooling pipes the secondary pipes and all this is steel minus the elbows and stuff here this is all PVC because by the time it hits here this gas is really cool anyhow so there's no chance of melting anything these are steel pipes by the way right here the only thing that's not steel is the plastic couples when the gas comes back downhill notice I've been saying uphill and downhill and all that I'm gonna give you an explanation of why here in a minute it comes down here still going downhill it hits the first T and then of course I've got a capture jar down here by the way this is a window to the health of the gas and I'm gonna cover that in a second also now the gas is gonna come out here it's gonna go here it's still going downhill again and it's entering into the tri filter right down here by the way all this old white pipe this is gonna be trashed off here I've had this since the first FEMA that I built so all this is going to be replaced before I turn back around and mount this onto the trailer. And one other thing too, this is my ignition port here. All I do is pull this guy off and put my vacuum fan up here. And I plug up the end of the line right here. And that basically shuts off this guy right here. And then I can do an ignition. Once I get everything going, then I can turn back around and plug him up. And then I take the fan, the vacuum fan, and I hook him here to prime this thing up. But that's another story right there. Now, I mentioned about the jar being a window to the health of your gas, and I'm going to give you a quick explanation of this. If you get a good ignition and everything's running really good, you're either going to see one or two things in this jar, either nothing at all or, at the end of the run, some real thin black soot water. If you see black soot water, that's also a good sign. It just means you didn't get all the water out of the gas before it hit the filters. But that black soot water is more than likely the cracked tar. Okay, it's the cracked tar that's been mixed in with some of the humidity that runs down into the bottom of it. If you see black gooey tar dripping in this thing, then you got issues. That means you either used the wrong size fuel, or the fuel wasn't cured properly, or it just wasn't a good fuel period, or your engine wasn't drawing hard enough on the gasifier to get the temperatures where it needed to be. There's a lot of factors on that. You can find a lot of that information if you fish around and just look for it. But anyhow, this guy right here is a big indicator of the health of your gas. And that's why I've got the jar sitting down there. Now, the reason I've got everything up and down, I mentioned everything uphill and downhill and all that good stuff, is I want any condensation not to puddle, period. I want it to either run down someplace and fill up a reservoir, but I don't want anything sitting in my pipes. So everything is straight up and down so that it has to have gravity pull it to the lowest points which would be the tank right here the jar right here and of course it comes out down here even this little pipe here going into the filter he's at a very slight angle and of course at the bottom of each tri filter I also have water reservoirs so I thought ahead of this I want to be able to capture all water in this thing as much as I could there it is now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one more video we'll make that two more videos I'm going to make one more video and I'm going to cover in detail exactly how to start up a gasifier correctly because believe it or not the proper starting of it plays a lot into having a good clean gas and if you get a good ignition then you're good right out of the gate and that means you're probably going to have a good run so that'll be my probably my last video covering a uh, how to do and then the next video you see this thing will be actually mounted up on the trailer so on that note guys flash 001 USA and we're going to turn this camera off you guys have a good day